It's been a pretty good night for Michael O'Neill. The left fielder for the San Antonio Missions already has two hits. There's a man on base and only one out as O'Neill heads to the plate in the bottom of the sixth inning. But he hits a ground ball towards the shortstop. That forces the out at second base and the throw to first base is good. The double play ends the inning. Now every player on the San Antonio Missions roster has a story. I could easily spend the next 20 minutes telling you about Michael O'Neill and how he ended up playing for San Antonio's minor league baseball team. But I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to tell you about Jen Mahoney. If you've been to a Missions baseball game, you very well may have seen Jen in action. But she doesn't play left field for San Antonio. She doesn't pitch or play first base. No, she plays the puppy taco. Well, well look who's here. Oh, you betcha. How about emissions fans? Can we make some noise for the legend that is Henry the Puffy Taco? Henry the Puffy Taco is a mascot for the San Antonio Missions baseball team. The story of how the team came to be represented by not one but two food items is what we're going to talk about in this chapter of the San Antonio Storybook, a podcast about the people and the places of the Alamo City. I'm Brantley Hightower. Burl Yarborough is the president of the San Antonio Missions. That's a good thing, because with a name like Burl Yarborough, he pretty much had to run a sports team, or be a Civil War general. One of the things Burl loves most about baseball is the leisurely speed of the games themselves. The game goes at its own pace. You know, you can have a conversation while you're watching the game. Most sports, you know, are so intense all the time that you don't have time to relax while you're watching it. But baseball is a game that allows time for that. Most people go to a missions game for the baseball. But there are plenty of other things to do there as well. There are the hot dogs and the beer and the kettle corn. There's also a playground for the kids and a party zone for the adults. And that's not all. I've always said, and, and minor league baseball more than anything, is, is more than the game. It's, it's not only the players on the field, which are some of the best in the world, but it's the puffy taco. It's uh, balapeno. Burl has been running the San Antonio Missions Baseball Club for over 30 years now. But it was something he saw before he came here that led to the creation of the famous taco race. One of the places I had spent some time in before I came to San Antonio was in Chattanooga, Tennessee with the ball club there. The name of this team is unfortunately not the Chattanooga Choo Choo's. Instead, they're named after a nearby mountain and are called the Chattanooga Lookouts. This is objectively lame. And Chattanooga did a little race with a character from the ball club. A gentleman that had worked there for many years was very well known in the community. And they did a, a promotion every game where he would get at second base and some kid would race him to home plate. Watching a small child outrun a beloved community elder might work for Chattanooga, but Burl knew San Antonio needed something more. Now, back in the late 80s, the Missions played their games at St. Mary's University, not too far from a restaurant that specialized in puffy tacos. My name is Jaime Lopez. I am the son of Henry Lopez, and I'm actually the president and CEO of Henry's Puffy Tacos. Well, we opened up Henry's Puffy Tacos in 1978. As a young boy, I used to go to the San Antonio Missions baseball games, and I saw that they had a little entertainment in between the innings, and there was this little pizza place down the street that had a little frisbee toss. And I'm like, why don't we do something like that? We're a block away from it. So I contacted the San Antonio Missions and I wanted to have some type of advertisement there. Uh, so we sold them a sponsorship and uh, basically took the puffy taco and made, made a mascot out of him. And, uh, you know, the race has been going on here since 1989. And so, at every Missions home game for the past three decades, a child will chase a puffy taco around the baseball diamond and tackle him to the ground. You know, at this point, we have a lot of people whose parents chase the puffy taco, and, and now, you know, their kids are doing it. In minor league baseball, the players on a team can change a lot over the course of a season. Individual players can get bumped up to the majors or move to another team. A case in point is Michael O'Neill, the left fielder I mentioned at the beginning of this episode. He's already been traded to the Biloxi, Mississippi Shuckers. 
The mascot for the Biloxi Mississippi Shuckers is a seagull. This mascot is lame. A puffy taco, however, is totally awesome. You know, I used to say, hey, our most recognizable personality is a puffy taco. You know, our shortstops may be here for a month and be gone, but, you know, now we've had the puffy taco here for 31 years. Henry the puffy taco is, well, he's a giant puffy taco named Henry. He has green legs, around his back is a padded puffy taco, and his front is a cascade of fabric lettuce and cheese. His head is a tomato. He doesn't have a face, a fact I personally find disconcerting, but nobody else seems to mind. Henry the Puffy Taco was the sole mascot for the San Antonio Missions for five years until 1994 when the Missions moved into their new stadium on the west side of town. That's when Balapino joined the team. Balapino is a six-foot-tall green jalapeno chili pepper. He wears tennis shoes and a San Antonio Missions jersey. His oversized baseball hat is turned around backwards on his head or his body, or whatever it is you call the top part of a jalapeno. He doesn't wear pants because he's a jalapeno, and jalapenos don't wear pants. But what kind of person makes the conscious decision to wear a giant jalapeno costume? What kind of person dresses up like a taco in order to be tackled by a small child? These are all good questions. And all of them will be answered after this word from our sponsor. Adriana didn't know her baby Amber would be born four months early at just over a pound. Or that University Health System's Level 4 NICU team would spend five months keeping her alive and helping her grow. She didn't know her baby would be one of the first in the country to be saved by a new medication that would correct her life-threatening digestive problem. Now she knows University Hospital was the right place to save her baby's life. See Amber's story at thinkingbeyond.net. Early on, employees of the team's front office were tapped to put on the costumes and perform as either Henry the Puffy Taco or Balapino. Later on, that task was outsourced. For the last three years, Party Pals SA has been running the mascot program for the San Antonio Missions. For weekday games, both mascots are brought to life by a single performer. Tonight, that performer is Jen Mahoney. If you've ever wondered about the person under the costume, here's what I can tell you. Jen is about 5 feet 7 inches tall. She's in her 30s and has long blonde hair. She's an Army veteran, and she has two daughters. I wouldn't say I'm really a super outgoing person. I mean, I I will if I have to be, but it's so much easier to get out there. Most people don't know who you are, so you can just act silly. and Really no judgment, so... (laughs) What strikes me most about Jen is that, if anything, she seems a little shy. That makes me wonder why she's chosen a job that requires her to ham it up in front of thousands of people. Jen tells me it's because she loves interacting with the fans. Me personally, my favorite fans are the special needs kids. Um, I have a nephew that's special needs. I've grown up, my mom was a special ed teacher, so I've always been involved with Special Olympics, all that stuff. So, you know, the special needs kids, adults, anybody, they, their face just lights up and they truly enjoy it. And it truly makes me happy. I meet Jen in the mascot locker room located right next to the visiting team's dugout. Jalapeno will be the first to make an appearance tonight, so Jen gets into costume by putting on a pair of green tights and a vest attached to furry green arms. These arms stick out through holes in the large body of the costume that sits directly on the head of the performer. You have like a pad on top, um, your head fits into there, and that's pretty much it. Once she's fully suited up, I continue my interview through the costume. I hold my microphone up to the green jalapeno pepper as would any serious self-respecting journalist. Uh, so, how much does the head weigh, more or less? Um. Like maybe 15 pounds, like or probably less. I don't Is know. What do you at least 10 pounds. 10? Yeah. Yeah, it's not too heavy, I guess. Are the eyes attached? Are they Velcro? Or... Velcro. Oh, my goodness. Oh, <laughs> wow. Watching Balapino rip off his own eyes is, in a word, disturbing. Of course, having detachable eyes does allow Balapino to change his moods. He has a set of angry eyes in addition to the happy eyes he typically wears. Beat me up, steal my hat. Okay. I hope this doesn't ruin things for you, but the antics of the mascots are totally staged. 
Jen works out the details of the game's opening skit with a group of kids who will be with her out on the field. And then uh, once you steal my hat off Balapeno, you steal that big hat. And then I'm going to be like, what? Like all mad, like, no, they can't steal that. So I'm going to chase y'all into the dugout, okay? And we're going to come back down here. After everyone knows what to do, it's game time. All right, guys, you ready? Bring it in. Yeah, three, two, okay. one, Balapeno. Okay, three, two, two one. one. Balapeno! Yeah, there we go. Why are you okay. Because I'm Balapeno. <laughs> As we head upstairs and into the stands, Alfred Oliveras tells me a little bit about his job as a mascot helper. It can be hard to see out of the costumes, and so Alfred helps Jen navigate through the crowd. And since Jen doesn't speak when she's in costume, it's Alfred's job to communicate that the puffy taco needs a break or that Balapino is, in fact, not a pickle. Watching Jen interact with fans, I see a complete transformation from the person I spoke to in the locker room. Hi, Balapino! She has become Balapino. The opening skit goes according to plan. Balapino steals some kids' hats, and then he gets his hat stolen by some kids. It's not the most sophisticated theater I've seen, but the kids have fun, and it gets the fans laughing. Afterwards, I meet back up with Jen and Alfred in the mascot dressing room. So usually after a skit like this where you're doing a lot of running, we'll come back in, take a quick breather, get a drink of water, and go hit the party deck. And then get we got to literally get all the way behind the stadium for the t-shirt toss. And so if we don't time that properly, it could be, okay, now we got to run to the back and get We had to do that time. the first two seasons, yeah. run to the back. That's not the only challenge facing a mascot and a mascot helper. There are other occupational hazards that are unique to this line of work. I actually got hit by a foul ball. Uh, out of the everywhere on the costume, it could have hit. It hit my leg and actually gave me a bruise. <laughs> oh, and I did fall off the dugout this year. <laughs> oh, that's right, you did. And then there are the annoying things that rowdy fans sometimes do. Uh, Pull the nose, try to take your eyes off. For me, yeah. it's 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 patting me on the back. Because oh, it just echoes. It's kind of oh, like a fish in an aquarium. Me. I could imagine what a fish in an aquarium feels like. Because it's all yours. Boom, boom, boom. Like, what? <laughs> you can't see where it's at. Like, what are you doing? Where are you at? Why are you hitting me? <laughs> you know, so. Now, what are some annoying things that adults do? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, man. Adults can be almost as bad or worse than kids. Yeah. Except they're louder. Dollar beer nights can be particularly rough on mascots. You don't react to the bad behavior. Yeah. Whether it's an adult or a kid. If an adult's being annoying, saying some vulgar things... You don't, you don't give them the attention, and you kind of just ignore it and walk away. I think that's probably the best way to handle it because you don't want to go viral for the wrong reasons. <laughs> but tonight, everyone is behaving themselves. Jen and Alfred work together like a well-oiled machine. After a quick break and a drink of water, hydration is critical for any mascot performer, they're back out into the stands. Before long, it's the fifth inning. That's when Balapino does his t-shirt toss in the birthday parade. And then, after almost three hours of baseball, it's finally time for Henry the Puffy Taco to make his debut. We head back to the dressing room for a quick costume change. The taco costume is designed so that the performer can use the same green tights as the Balapino costume, but everything else has to get switched out. Shoes. Yep, different shoes, uh, different arms, and of course the, the body and the lettuce head. <laughs> so yeah, it's really, it's really easy to change out of these. Remember, the Puffy Taco's primary job is to be chased by and tackled by a child. I asked Jen about how that child is chosen. She has no idea. I think they sign up somewhere, I'm not exactly sure. So I'm not, I'm not sure of the, all those details. You just allow yourself to be tackled by whoever Yeah, 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 and usually for some reason I get all the big kids. All the kids that really want to do damage. So I imagine there's a little bit of skill because you have to fall dramatically, but not so much that you injure said child. Yeah, yeah. There's a, a few times where I've had kids take me out by the legs, just diving. And I want to fall back, but I stop myself, so I, I end up falling forward. But try not to hurt anyone. I mean, I know they sign a waiver, but still, you don't want to do anything like that. <laughs> the taco chase remains basically unchanged from when it began back in 1989. The kid starts running from home plate at the same time the Puffy Taco starts running from second base. Somewhere between third and home, the kid catches up to the Taco, who gets tackled to the ground. The child then places a foot upon the fallen Taco and raises his arms in triumphant victory. 
After the kid is ushered off the field, the puffy taco gets back up. He dusts himself off, and he begins to dance. As the mission's players run past her to take the field, Jin dances inside the puffy taco costume. She dances like no one is watching. Except, of course, everyone is watching. Standing there between third base and the dugout, this normally shy mother of two dances with carefree abandon. And even though I can't see Jen's face when she's wearing the costume, I know she's smiling. When the game is over, Jen will take off the costume. She'll take off the green tights and the vest with the furry arms. As she heads back to the parking lot, she'll see the same people she interacted with as Balapino or the Puffy Taco. But all they'll see is a tired and slightly sweaty woman. They'll have no idea it was her their kids were hugging. They'll have no idea it was her they saw dancing. Jin isn't a superhero. She doesn't dress up in tights and a cape to fight crime. But she does dress up in tights and a taco costume to make people smile. I'm not entirely sure what it means that both of the mission's mascots are food items, but it somehow seems right for San Antonio. And being a mascot somehow seems perfect for Jen. Thanks today to Mark Myers and Burl Yarborough of the San Antonio Missions, as well as Ron Oliveris, Jen Mahoney, and Alfred Oliveris at Party Pals SA. I found there was a lot of material to talk about on this subject, so we'll be returning to it for next month's episode as well. Help with the script was provided by Rachel Stevens, and the music was by Blue Dot Sessions. San Antonio Storybook is a production of The Rivard Report. You can find more information about this podcast and enjoy all the nonprofit journalism the report has to offer at therevardreport.com. Until next time, I'm Brantley Hightower. Oh, and just in case you are wondering about the actual baseball game, we won.